Some of you might remember the Hackintosh build here that we did a couple of months ago. And the objective here was to see how hard it would be to get an AMD Ryzen system running Mac OS. Because the general understanding is that AMD processors are just not that friendly with Hackintosh builds and that it is better to go with Intel instead. Well, long story short, we did get it up and running and it wasn't much more difficult compared to an Intel system. Today though, we're taking that system and stepping it up a notch. We're taking the six core processor and upgrading it to a 16 core one and we're also upgrading the GPU. So we'll take a look at the performance there and I also want to dedicate a big portion of this video to sort of discuss whether building something like this is even worth it as opposed to buying a real Mac. So one of the main problems with this build was that the onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for this motherboard was incompatible with Mac OS. And so let's deal with that first. It's a pretty easy and cheap fix. You'll need one of these chips here from Broadcom that Apple use in their own MacBooks. I'll link the exact one that I used down below. All I did was swap the existing wireless chip with this one along with an M.2 adapter. And you can just use the existing antennae from the original chip. So this was actually enough to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth up and running out of the box, meaning that I didn't need any additional kext files or adjustments to the config.plist file, iCloud services work and pairing with AirPods was just as flawless with a regular Apple machine. In fact, AirDrop also worked without an issue, which was great to see and a bit surprising to be honest, seeing as this is one of the most desired features from a real Mac system. And in terms of a Hackintosh, it's usually one of the harder features to get running. Honestly, there are probably a few more little special features that don't work here that I just haven't come across yet. But for the most part, we have the majority of functionality that most people will need from a Mac OS system. One little feature that I noticed that didn't work was the take photo from iPhone feature. It's there and it says it works on the Mac, but it just times out every time. Not really sure if this is a Hackintosh compatibility issue or if it's just a setup issue on my end. You probably already know this, but if you want 100% of the functionality within Apple's Mac OS, then Hackintosh probably isn't for you unless you're prepared to spend a serious amount of time into researching the optimal configurations and kind of files that you need. More on that in just a minute. But one of the big benefits of building a Hackintosh is of course that you can build a pretty powerful machine for not a whole lot of money. So the initial system that I built wasn't too bad at all. It had a six core Ryzen 5 3600 and a Vega 56. That's plenty of power to get some decent work done in apps like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. But let's take things a step further and see what happens with a 16 core Ryzen 3950X and a Radeon 7. For some perspective, a 16 core Mac Pro would set you back around 8,000 US dollars. And that's with a much weaker Radeon Pro 580X, which is essentially an RX 580. That's nothing compared to our Radeon 7 with 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. Thankfully, seeing as we're just using the same generation of CPU as we had previously from the 3600 to 3950X, there's no need to make adjustments to the config.plist file, but that is something that you might need to do if you're upgrading between generations. I had no problems booting up here at all and the new hardware was recognized and working fine. Unfortunately, the temp sensors don't seem to work here for AMD CPUs on Mac OS, but I have tested the 3950X with this CPU cooler previously and I'm confident that everything is running just fine. I played around with Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere and all three video editing programs seem to run just fine. Very familiar performance to what you'd expect from the same hardware running on a Windows machine. Machine. The big difference here is that you can actually run something like Final Cut Pro if you do need that for your work. And we can see at least on a performance level, we do get some very strong results against the Mac Pro and iMac Pro, but of course at a lower cost. Single core scores outperformed every Mac in existence and multi-core scores in Geekbench were okay in terms of price to performance, but nothing over the top. Testing the Metal Graphics API, which is what Final Cut Pro uses, we're getting much better performance compared to the baseline 580X that the Mac Pro uses, and a bit faster still than the upcoming Radeon Pro 5700X, according to Geekbench's database. Of course, though, you do have to actually build and research how to get this Hackintosh up and running, which does take additional time as opposed to additional money, and that's something that I should not understate. <laughs> 
Now, one big problem with Hackintoshes, as you might know, is that there's a very likely possibility that if you do happen to click update to a new Mac OS version, your install will likely become very unstable and maybe even refuse to boot. So the version that we're running here currently on this machine is Mac OS Mojave. And when upgrading to Catalina, we can see that this just bricks the entire system. This is one area where a real Mac obviously would have no issues. Now there is a more stable route of of building a Hackintosh compared to what I've done here, and that's with a bootloader called OpenCore. I built this system with the Clover bootloader, as at the time it was the much easier and more common route, even for AMD CPUs, but OpenCore, which is a more advanced way of configuring your Hackintosh, allows for a much more involved and deliberate process. It forces you to understand the moving parts in everything here, and there's a very dedicated community behind the scenes. Honestly, I would push you in this direction instead of what I've done here with Clover if you're looking to build something as stable as possible with the latest macOS versions. So with our Hackintosh build pretty much useless after that Catalina update attempt, I decided to give OpenCore a shot and worked off of the very detailed written guide. There's also a video out there from Snazzy Labs which helps me understand how to run things like SSD tea time and proper tree, which I found to be sort of the main two differences between the Clover and OpenCore out and of course I will link that video down below. So honestly I actually enjoyed the open core process of doing things compared to Clover. I felt like I understood it a lot more. I got right to the end of the install process to the point where you set up your Mac but I can only see a portion of the screen and a moving cursor. So this build did not work for me. So although it was more detailed and thorough and technically is the better way to do things, I could not get it to work. I've tried different Mac OS builds, I've tried different SM BIOS versions, and of course, swapping through multiple different supported GPUs and the ports on the back. Of course, I didn't reuse any of my existing Clover files because there are some clashes there, and I made sure to clean the NVRAM. Still no success, but let me know your thoughts down below if you have any ideas. Now I understand that there are a portion of you who just wanna see the 3950X and Radeon 7 toast the Mac Pro in terms of price to performance, and hopefully you got the results that you are after. But there are also a portion of you who are interested in building something like this and are wondering if this is worth your time and your money. And I would say if you're gonna be doing this as a hobby system and for a bit of fun, then definitely uh, you will learn a lot and it is a challenging yet enjoyable process. Put a couple weekends aside, get stuck into the open core documentation, and I'm confident that a lot of you will have a successful and enjoyable outcome. But if you're going to be doing actual work on this machine that pays the bills and you absolutely need Mac OS, whether that be for Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, or maybe Xcode for software development, putting the stability argument aside, learning how to build and actually building a Hackintosh does require a significant amount of your time if you're starting with zero knowledge and if you're doing it properly with something like open core. That's time that could have been spent working on a real Mac and paying off the difference that you could have saved with that Hackintosh build. And I'll let that sink in for a moment because I think the main argument for a Hackintosh is the amount of money that you can save building something like this as opposed to you know a $10,000 Mac Pro. But you also have to consider how much your time is worth. And if you're gonna be doing this for, uh, you know, if your job depends on Mac OS, so let's say, uh, you need Logic Pro X or you're an Xcode development and you really need that performance, maybe you are just better off buying a Mac instead. Because for you, the additional time versus the additional money to buy a Mac might actually cancel out. And uh, you gotta ask yourself what you would rather in the end, a perhaps less functional and less stable Hackintosh or the slightly lower performance but 100% stable Mac machine. Now, some of you may have heard of the rumored uh, upcoming Intel CPUs. Supposedly, there's a 10 core on the way. I think I'll reattempt open core with that CPU and see if we get some better stability and a better outcome there. I will also leave some very helpful links down below in the description if you are interested in building something like this. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.